Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks, Amanda, and thanks for joining today. We're very happy to be presenting a uh, webinar on using market profile as a base for your trading plan. I want to thank our co-sponsors, CQG and Alexander Trading, and uh, our special guest, Tom Alexander. Uh, I'm going to just go briefly through a couple of points here, and one of the first things I want to do is introduce you to Marcus Kwan, who is the Vice President of Product Strategy and Design for CQG. Marcus? Thanks, Ray. Um, thanks for the opportunity to participate in today's webinar with two of our partners. Um, for more than 30 years, CQG has been an industry leader for fast, accurate, and reliable market data and unrivaled graphic analysis. Um, CQG's integrated client is our flagship product and it's the ideal solution for all professional trader needs from decision making to execution. Our worldwide market coverage is available for futures, options, uh, fixed income, foreign exchange, equities, news, OTC, proprietary data, indices, and reports. Our charting and anal analytics tools include powerful and easy to use um, industry standard charts, including market profile, which you'll see today in Tom's presentation. And CQG's market profile charting is known for its flexibility and ease of use. It's easy to set up custom sessions, conditionally color your TPOs, display your orders and positions and other studies. And you can add market profile studies to nearly all of CQG's chart types. So attendees of today's webinar are welcome to a free trial of CQG's integrated client with market profile charting. And I'll turn it back over to Ray. Thank you very much. All right, great. Thank you very much. Uh, let me move ahead back to my slides here for a second. I'm just going to say a few things about ICE. I think most of you who are on the webinar today know who we are. But for those of you who don't, uh, we are a, the subsidiary of the Intercontinental Exchange that is known as ICE Futures US. And we primarily are the old uh, New York Board of Trade, or NIBOT. Our main product groups are the softs, so we're the, the biggest market in the world for sugar, coffee, cocoa, cotton, and orange juice. Uh, we also have financially settled grain contracts. We're also the exclusive home of the Russell Stock Index Futures and the most actively traded U.S. dollar index future in the world. We also have 60 currency pairs, which are uh, actually free of charge to trade on the screen if you want to trade those. We also have credit indexes in a, a huge energy marketplace, both for uh, OTC products as well as futures products and net gas, electric power, and crude oil. All of our trading is electronic. We do not have a trading floor except for the New York Stock Exchange, which we now are owners of, where we do have open outcry trading for stocks there. One of the things I do want to mention is uh, it's a very helpful weekly index market commentary that we offer uh, along with Nick McDonald from Trade with Precision. That comes out on Sunday nights, and it's a really excellent way to start your trading week. There are two brief videos that uh, Nick McDonald and his crew put together. They focus on the dollar index as well as the Russell 2000. It lasts about five to eight minutes, but it's a great recap of the previous week, and it also gives you a good roadmap to follow for the week coming up. And uh, Nick and his crew have had a Great track record. They've been especially good on the Russell uh, for all year this year. So I really strongly recommend that you, uh, you know, bookmark that at theice.com forward slash ice commentary and watch that when it comes out on Sunday night. Uh, it, it's a great way for all traders to start their week. Uh, for more information, you can email me here, ray.mckenzie at theice.com. We also have a tremendous amount of information on our website, including replays of webinars like this one, which we are recording today. Um, and uh, there's as much information there as you want to spend the time reading about. It's a, a really great website for traders. So let's get to our special guest today, who is Tom Alexander, and Tom is the president of Alexander Trading. He's been trading on the screen for over 28 years. 
He trades futures. He trades stock. Uh, he's experienced with institutional trading. Uh, he does consulting for hedge funds, trading research, trading education. He's the author of an excellent uh, book called Practical Trading Applications for Market of Market Profile. Market Profile is one of our most uh, popular webinar topics. Every time we do one of these, uh, we definitely get a lot of attention. And Tom publishes in several well-known trading magazines. He's frequently quoted by Reuters, Dow Jones, Bloomberg. Uh, Tom will take questions at the end, and uh, we are recording again. Uh, we had some questions about that. We are recording this. Without further ado, I'm going to hand things over to you, Tom. Oops, I muted myself. Okay. Uh, I want to thank Amanda Ray, Marcus, uh, and the people in ICE and the people at CQG. I've had a long standing relationship with, with CQG for most of my career, actually. And uh, certainly, uh, I trade the ICE contract. And we're going to focus the example from the use of the ICE contract. And they're very real. Examples. I do trade and actively cover uh, every day uh, several of the ICE contracts, depending on what's in them. The topic today is is really a critical topic, uh, and you could put you could we're going to talk about developing a market profile trade plan, but you could you could almost say just developing a trade plan and you would be spot on. It's amazing how few traders have a trade plan, and we're going to get to why that is so critical today. And I'm going to give you some ideas about how to develop a trade plan, in addition to why to develop one. The reality is, unless you have a trade plan, you're not going to succeed at trading. Uh, trading is very serious business, and it has to be approached like other serious businesses and other serious professions. Uh, the obligatory risk disclaimer, a risk disclaimer that is so true, trading is risky. Hopefully you've heard that. Hopefully you pay attention to that. Is hey, Tom. Tom, it's Ray McKenzie. Just want to, can I interrupt for a second? Sorry, uh, before we get started, the sound is going in and out a little bit. If you could maybe uh, just be right on top of your microphone, it's it's just going in and out. We're getting a lot of comments. Okay, uh, is this better? Over time is better. Great. Okay, I, I think I had my uh, my uh, microphone turned around right to the back of my head. <laughs> okay. So. Minor, minor issue. Now, so Much you, better. am I showing my screen? I don't think I'm showing my screen either, am I? You have to click to your tab. Or there yeah, we go. Okay, it's coming gotcha. up. Okay, here we go. All right. Now let me get the uh, let me get this so that I can see questions that may be coming in. And now, okay, the, is the sound okay now? Everybody sees everything. Uh, so it's good to get the the uh, kinks out up front. Okay, developing a market profile trade plan. Once again, uh, you know, as I was saying before, it's it's critical to have a trade plan, uh, and we're gonna we're gonna discuss that in detail. Trading is risky. It is even more risky if you don't have a trade plan. If you do not have a trade plan, it is almost a certainty that you're going to lose all your money. And I strongly encourage you, regardless of the methodology that you trade, that you you do some, some sim trading and you confirm that you have a positive expectancy in your trading before you begin trading with real money. Because trading truly is a risky business. It's a wonderful business and it can be a wonderful profession, but it is a very serious business. And it is often presented as some sort of a game uh, or a proxy for the lottery. And if you approach it that way, you're going to be sadly disappointed if you are expecting to make money. So uh, one of the first steps that you must take in, uh, to be successful as a trader is to have a trade plan. So we're going to talk about that today and in particular how to use market profile to do it. Uh, as Ray spoke in my intro, spoke about I've been trading for 28 years in front of a screen. I have 23 years of market profile experience, institutional experience. I've owned a futures brokerage firm, all of these things. Uh, there's more information about me on my website. You're not here for me today. You're here for information. Why do we want to have a trade plan? Well, I've, I've highlighted some of that. Uh, like most of you now, I, you know, I, I sort of peruse the internet during the trading day when I get bored just looking at different stuff. And I recently ran across an article called Deliberate Practice, What It Is and Why You Need It. Now, as a 
to get off on a tangent a little bit, I have an 11 year old son who's learning how to play tennis. I've played tennis my entire life. I'm a very good tennis player. However, I don't know how to teach an 11 year old how to play tennis. So I've been doing all this study and reading and, and research on teaching a kid to play and teaching young people how to acquire any skill. And in that search, I came across this article on deliberate practice, what it is and why you need it. And so many of these things that I have found in my search to, for me to learn how to teach my son how to play tennis uh, apply to trading and deliberate practice. This is a, a, a wonderful article. Uh, and it pertains specifically to trading, and it pertains specifically, as you're going to see, to the topic today, which is de de developing a trade plan. And part of this article uh, quotes uh, of this person, I don't know if this is a man or a woman, uh, Arison, the role of deliberate practice in the acquisition of expert performance. And so many of us believe that you've got to be a savant to be a trader, that all oh, those traders are there just, they just have something special. They have, they're endowed with, with extra uh, special characteristics. They're super smart or they're super intuitive or they have, they just have abilities the rest of us don't have. And that is increasingly being proved not to be the case, that expertise is something that can be acquired by the majority of people if those people know how to acquire expertise and how expertise is acquired. And w one of these uh, practices is this deliberate practice concept. In other words, it's not about what you're born with, it's about how consistently and deliberately you can work to improve your performance. Now, as an offshoot to this, I want to leave you with another thought or give you another thought. I'm sure some of you have been trading for many, many years. So some of you consider yourselves to be experienced traders. It is my experience in working with traders, and I have, I have been a trader for going on 29 years now, and I have been an official trading educator for 10 years. I worked with traders before that, but had a trading education business for 10 years. And in my experience in working with traders, People that say, well, yeah, I've been trading for seven years, I have seven years of experience. They really don't have seven years of experience. What they typically have is one year of experience seven times because they constantly switch from gimmick to gimmick to gimmick to magic to magic to magic, and they never sit down, and they're never consistent, and they're certainly never deliberate. Uh, and it, 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 if you can't be consistent and deliberate, you can't improve your performance. You can't be consistent and deliberate unless you have a trade plan. So I implore you, if you don't take anything away from this, if you think everything, the rest of everything that I say today is complete bunk, that's fine. But develop a trade plan. Okay, if you, if you can't define what you're doing, and if you can't consistently replicate specific certain actions, you're going to fail. You are trading randomly. And one of the goals in trading, especially, especially as discretionary traders, well, systems traders too, but most of you guys are, are uh, I'm sure, are discretionary traders. One of your goals is to, to, to the greatest degree possible, eliminate randomness from your trading. And randomness, statistically speaking, is is chance. It's a 50-50 chance of an outcome. And most traders get caught up in this idea that, well, I, ha I, had, I had some winners today using this magic oscillator that I've got, so therefore this is a valid methodology. Well, anything will generate winners and losers, but that doesn't mean that it's not random. Uh, and the other thing is, and this is what we're going to talk about today, you have to have a valid methodology. And I'm going to posit to you today that, method, uh, that market profile, auction market concepts is the most valid methodology in existence, bar none. Uh, if you have, if you take the time to define a trade plan and you keep very detailed records, it will be difficult for you to not succeed. Uh, now, I wanna, I'm gonna say that again. If you keep, if you have a defined trade plan and you keep very detailed records, it will be difficult for you not to succeed. And this is a truth, and this is my experience. O over 10 years of working with traders, I've had people pay me a lot of money to mentor them, 
And I've gotten very good over the years at very quickly determining when someone is going to succeed and when they aren't. And it has nothing to do with their profession. It doesn't have anything to do with whether or not they are an engineer or an art teacher or have a Ph.D. in uh, mathematics or they're a plumbing contractor. The reality is the ones that succeed versus the ones that do not are the ones that will do the work. And when I say do the work, it's very, it's, it's nothing that my 11-year-old could not do. It's, it's a lot of mundane things like keeping records, define, making a rule set, uh, annotating your charts when you take a trade. And the reality is most traders will not do that. If you will do that, you will put yourself in a tiny fraction of people that are very likely to succeed. A lot of success in trading is, the, is, the, is just simply showing up and doing the work. Uh, if you're depending on magic and some gimmick, it, you're, you're not going to succeed. Now, I realize magic sells, but it doesn't work. So why have a trade plan? Well, it forces definition and structure. It can be self-correcting. And it forces reality. Uh, if you have a trade plan and you're keeping records and annotating your charts, the results are in front of you. And how those results are derived are in front of you. And if you have that information, you can learn, you can teach yourself to trade. You either have an edge or you don't. And if, if you have a trade plan and you're keeping records, you will answer this question whether or not you have a trade plan. Uh, have an edge. If you're making money, you have an edge. If you're not making money, you do not. And a trade plan facilitates this concept of deliberate practice. Okay, why market profile? Well, the first thing I want to do is sort of reframe the question. And I'm using the term market profile uh, because it is, it's a charting format. That's what market profile is, okay? Market profile is a charting format. It is a way of, dis of accumulating and displaying data. Nothing more, nothing less. And I want to emphasize nothing more. The market profile graph is not magic. It is a view of market activity from a certain perspective. Now, it is a, an ingenious tool, and it can be used, and it's extremely helpful, but it is a means to an end, not an end in itself. So I want to rephrase the question for the sake of the rest of the webinar. Why market profile auction market principles? Now, when you add market, auction market principles, what you're doing with market profile is you're overlaying a worldview. You're overlaying a bigger picture uh, of, of what's going on in a market, and you're using the market profile graph as a tool as opposed to the end itself. The end itself are these auction market principles. And the auction market principles provide, with the use of a profile graph and bar charts too, I'm going to show you some bar charts uh, today too, it provides robustness. Now, systems traders know what robustness means. It means several specific things. One is you can take an out-of-sample uh, example for something that you back-tested and your, your system will work on that. I use it in a little bit different way in that it's a worldview that's objective and consistent regardless of asset or time frame. It doesn't matter what you're trading or the time frame you're trading. These auction market principles and market profile, the market profile graph, apply. Now, that's unique. I don't, I'm not aware of any other form of trading system or the device out there that can, that can make that claim. And that, that's, that, that's a rather outrageous claim, frankly, but it's true. And if I'm wrong, I challenge you to prove me wrong and then let me know. So why is it important? Well, it's consistent. Remember, back to deliberate practice. We, we, for deliberate practice, we have to have a means to replicate our actions or we can't validate or invalidate our actions. So uh, the market profile, these auction market principles, provide a consistency. It's timeless. And it also gives us opportunity, and this is key, 
Uh, you know, we are auction market traders, so we are opportunistic traders. I'm showing you something today that has the same application in coffee, the Russell, or Apple stock, or cocoa, and it has the same or the, the same principles apply on a five-minute chart as a monthly chart. So that that itself, the fact that it is so incredibly fractal is the popular term, uh, makes it, it gives it really its edge, and we're gonna we're gonna talk about that too. I'm gonna show you some examples of that. <clears throat> Okay, now I'm going to show you some charts here, and this is observational data of the consistency and the timelessness of this approach. So I'm going to show you four charts. This is chart A, that's sort of in your mind's eye, and I can go back to these if you would like. This is chart B. All right, so that's chart B. This is chart A. Now, what you're seeing here, you're seeing the market profile graph. And when people hear market profile, you know, after about a, you know, two days of exploring the internet and finding out what it is, well, the, the idea of this Gaussian shape on this edge pops into their mind. So you can sort of see this Gaussian shape form uh, in these structures here. Each of these individual structures is its own auction, and it's 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 a profile. Okay, so this is chart A. This is chart B, and once again, we see that Gaussian shape is prevalent. It's ubiquitous. This is chart C. All right, you see the Gaussian shape here. Well, I missed a slide, I think. Or well, maybe it's here. Well, in, okay, I'm, I'm going I'm to move ahead instead of, uh, I think I, I can get to it. But anyway, the point of this is, now this, this is chart A. And this is a weekly chart of the Dow. And this, this time frame across the bottom of the scale, this is 1930 to 1935. And you can see this Gaussian shape in effect in the Dow weekly. Okay, this is chart A. This is chart B. This is weekly cocoa now, the four-year period from 2009 to, to 2013. I mean, uh, 2000, not 20, yeah, 2013. So here we have the Dow and the 1930s, and here we have a chart of cocoa that's up to date. And you know, what do you see? Well, you see the same Gaussian shape, the same same forces, if you will, are forming this chart of the Dow on a profile format in the 1930s and COCO now. Now here's chart C. This is a five minute chart of the E mini Russell. And this is today or yesterday, I can't, I don't recall which one it is. Well, once again, we see that Gaussian shape in effect. And these are five minute auctions. Uh, some of these auctions are well, this is uh, this is a year auction. Uh, this is uh, this is actually a couple of years. This is nineteen. I think this is nineteen thirty to thirty one in here. So the the point of this is is to show you the timelessness. This is five minutes. Now this is uh, the Russell, and then here is this is March coffee. So this is a five minute chart of March coffee. So what are the Russell? Well, what are all these contracts? What's the commonality? What's the common denominator? The denominator among these assets in these time frames. They are all traded in an auction market. The media in which these contracts, the Dow was traded in the 1930s, uh, cocoa is traded now, coffee is traded now, the Russell is traded now, regardless of whether it's a weekly, monthly, yearly time frame, or a five minute intraday time frame. They're all traded in an auction market. Now, it's very popular these days to say, oh, the markets have changed it. They are changing. They're different. You can't trade them. Uh, they're manipulated. They're too fast. The, con the computers control them. Guess what? The markets have always been manipulated. They're always going to be manipulated. Uh, there have been pronounced differences in markets and trading over the years, especially since I've been trading. I started trading in the mid-80s. We had transparency. We had much more volume. Uh, and things are electronic. We have access now that we didn't have then. 
But it really hasn't helped traders very much. Uh, and there are various reasons for that. But the thing that hasn't changed is is that all of these assets and all these time frames follow the concepts and the principles of development of an auction market. So you've got this extraordinarily timeless and robust approach to use as a basis for develop, for developing a trade plan. Let me go down here and come behind and get caught up here. Now, I'm going to go through about, I think there's six auction market principles. Markets trade higher until they run out of buyers, lower until they run out of sellers. The function of an auction market is to facilitate trade. There are two phases of market development. Horizontal, which is in you know, common trading parlance, a consolidation, and vertical, which in common trading parlance is a trend. These two phases of development are in effect in all markets and all time frames. Now, you can have a phase of horizontal development going on in one time frame and a vertical phase of development going on in a smaller or a larger time frame. But these two phases of development are in effect in all markets and all time frames. There are distinct patterns that each phase of development follows. These patterns form key reference areas, and key reference areas provide trade location from where there's a greater than random probability of a sharp move, which is the segue into something all traders must have, a positive expectancy. If you do not have a positive expectancy, you lose money. It's, a, it's statistics gambling 101, positive expectancy. You've got to have an edge. They're basically, I'm not going to get into a lot of math today. You can Google positive expectancy and get all the math you, you could ever want. But they're basically two ways of achieving a positive expectancy as a trader. Have a high percentage of winning trades or have a methodology, a trade plan, where you have much larger winners than losers. Now, which way do you think most traders go? The overwhelming majority of traders and the overwhelming majority of, of stuff that hits your email box uh, crows about having you know, we just had our 4,781st winning trade out of 4,783. You know, and nonsense like that. that. That's impossible, by the way. So there are two ways to do this. Most traders focus on having a high percentage of winning trades. However, most traders also lose money. It is almost an axiom you can uh, can use in your trading that if most people are doing it, you don't want to. And this is this is one of them. Uh, most traders want to have a high percentage of winning trades. Uh, you want to develop a trade plan that allows you margin for error, both in terms of execution. Uh, you know, just clicking the mouse as well as your own ability to recognize what you think you're recognizing. If you come in and you're trying to uh, flip in and out of the Russell all day long, 75 times a day, you're going to lose money. I'll take the other side of your account over the course of a year, all, you know, 100 people all day long, and you just get filthy rich. It, it's just, it, it's, you, you've got to focus on having, I firmly believe this, on having bigger winners than losers. Most traders, one of the big problems they have is they over-trade. They will not wait and be patient and disciplined. And part of the reason they won't wait and be patient and disciplined is they don't have a basis for being patient and disciplined. Uh, the approach that we encourage you to take, uh, an approach based on these auction market concepts, inherently promote discipline and patience because we, we tell you there are only certain times in trade location that you have any business taking a trade, period.
How do, can you know if you have a positive expectancy? Keep detailed records. You, you know, if you're sitting there and you are, you're not keeping records, I'll get, almost guarantee you you don't have a positive expectancy. A lot of times traders don't keep records because they keep losing money and they just don't want to face reality. Uh, keeping records forces you <laughs> to, to see what you're doing and, and to review it. Uh, now, this is a trade log that we give to our clients to take our, our trade plan course. And this, this is an example from a client. Uh, this is a, a, an actual example. And over here, you've got the start date. Uh, you've got the contract, long or short. You have an entry price, the number of contracts, the first exit, the second exit. Then you have your results over here, your profit and loss, the duration you're in the trade. And I'm showing you this so you get an idea of the types of things that you want to be able to track when you're trading. Uh, this, you know, this is a, a basic spreadsheet, like a, you know, once again, that we, have, we provide our clients to take our trade plan course. But if you're a spreadsheet wizard, you can put together, this is, you want to put together something like this. Uh, this this is another part of our trade log where uh, we divide the results into 25 trade sets so that we can monitor what's going on. If it needs to be corrected, then we can catch it pretty early. You know, 25 trades is something approaching, uh, you know, the low, low end of statistical significance. And then we'll take a look at the winning percentage, the loss percentage, uh, the average one amount, you know, the usual suspects of things that you're gonna you're, you're gonna want to keep in terms of trading statistics. Uh, here's your average winner, average loser, ratio, etc. And then over here, here are the results for the individual contracts. And then uh, this is where we graph the equity curve. You know, using the all this is tied into that first page that I showed you, uh, where you enter the trades. But you, you want to be you want to have a tool like this so you can monitor what you're doing and see up front what we're doing. And then another part of our spreadsheet, we have the specific strategy outlined over here, and then we get statistics on each strategy. So th th this is an example of where you want to go with trade planning and keeping a, a trade record. And these are specific quote unquote market profile auction market trade. So everything that we do is based on auction market principles. And here's the trade log that shows, here's, here's where the strategy breakdown is over here. You get your profit and loss, your wins, percentages, et cetera, et cetera, and your edge for each individual strategy. So we've really put together a tool that breaks down the trades uh, in very detailed manner. And if you do something like this, uh, you can go back and you can see what's working, you can see what's not working, et cetera. So, you, in a trade plan, you want to form a working assumption. You want to trade in the direction of the working assumption and take the setups as they occur. This is big. Don't predict. Almost all traders want to predict. Almost all trading educators want to sell you the idea that you can predict. You can't. You cannot predict with an edge. And frankly, it's not relevant to trading success. In any way, it is a fool's game. There are skillions of ways to lose money. There are really only a few sound ways to make money. Uh, regardless of the way, you, you have to have a positive expectancy. Uh, the overwhelming majority of the stuff that hits your email box is is just is some of it is laughably absurd. But get out of this idea that you have to predict markets to make money. You don't. Now I'm going to show you some trade examples, and I'm going to give you a base strategy that we use. Uh, and this is a base, quote unquote, market profile auction market strategy. And it's the initiative trade from, from a mature balance area. An initiative trade is a trend trade. A balance, mature balance is a consolidation. That's, you know, 
about to break. Now, I, I could do a webinar just on this topic alone, but for the sake of this webinar, which is on trade planning to give you some ideas about developing a market profile slash auction market trade plan, I'm not going to get into the minutia of initiative trade, mature balance, what is mature balance, how do you know if it's mature balance, et cetera, which are all legitimate questions, but again, uh, we'd be here until 10 o'clock tonight. Okay, your basic market profile setup. Actually, basic market, this should be plural, market profile setups are the following. Take trades from key reference areas, and key reference areas, your basic key reference areas are the upper and lower extremes of the auction you're analyzing or near the high volume node, which is typically located near the mode, near the mean, and it, the mean and the mode typically are close to the same thing for you statisticians out there. Uh, but it's the high volume node, it's that protrusion of the bell-shaped curve, it's the point, et cetera. And then what we're trying to do, we're trying to find opportunities that provide the risk of the smaller auction with the potential reward of the larger auction. Now I'm going to show you a trade example. This is a basic market profile setup, and this is a chart of cotton. And this particular profile, now what I've done, and this is one of the wonderful things about CQG, it's very easy to manipulate their market profile charts and to build composite profiles that give a good, clean view of the auction that you want to analyze. And so this particular auction is from March to September 2013. Here we have trading for October a couple months ago. Now, here is that same chart, and then here's the trading in October. Now, this is a 60-minute view. This is a 60-minute auction versus a daily auction. So this Gaussian shape here, this is what it looks like on a 60-minute chart, on a 60-minute 60, 60 configuration of a profile uh, chart right here. So this is this. Now, and let me, let me further explain. The general concept, or one of the general trading guidelines that we use is that when you are in a mature profile structure, in a, in a uh, an asset of multi-month, in a multi-month auction or balance as this one is, it builds this high volume that the general guideline is, is to trade on the price side of the high volume node. So if, in this particular instance, if price is below this high volume node, we want to be favoring shorts. If price is above it, we want to be favoring longs. So here we have a structure. This structure here is right here, and it's just below this high volume node. So that gives us our working assumption. It gives us our trading bias. Now, here's a situation where if I'm trading cotton, and I see this market trading at this level, and it begins to break below the high volume node of this structure. Now remember, this is a much smaller structure. This is a 60 minute time frame. This is a daily time frame. So this structure is in here, and it's actually it's smaller than this structure. If I take a short trade at 824, I know I do not want to see this market trade above this high volume node. Remember, I, I want to be biased to the price side of the high volume node. So I'm using the smaller degree structure to enter the trade, and I'm leaning against the risk of the smaller structure, but I have the potential of the much larger structure. So my risk is defined by this smaller structure, and I have the potential of this much larger structure. Now, this is what it looks like on a daily chart. Now, this is a bar chart, obviously. If you can sort of visualize the Gaussian shape that would form up here, you've got a very two-sided trade in here. Uh, 
And an entry here would have carried about $180 risk with a potential reward down to here, and you can see it carried much further than that. So in this particular instance, I had $180 risk and a potential return as determined by the target. The target, this is a logical target. If I'm expecting an initiative trade, I'm expecting at a minimum for this market to trade to this level and likely below it. And it did eventually trade much lower below this. But for the sake of the example, uh, we'll say that we only uh, reached a profit of $2,470 before we took the contract off. But this is the type of trade that you're looking for. You're looking for reward to risk, not just two to one or three to one or four to one. If, if you do this, you get used to the fact that you will be able to identify trades of 10 to 1, 12 to 1, 15 to 1 reward to risk. It's, they're, they're not that unusual. Uh, it's not like day trading in and out all day long. But you don't have to have many trades like this over the course of a quarter to have very good results, especially if you're trading two contracts. This is, we're talking about one contract here. Okay, so the, the, the auction market trade plan is sound. It's consistent, it's objective, and it can be used to develop a, a almost unlimited number of trade plans depending on your experience, goals, and risk profile. Uh, I have clients that just trade options using an auction market trade plan. Uh, I have clients that just trade stocks. I have clients that just trade futures. I have clients that just swing trade or position trade. I do have a few clients, not many, that just day trade. Uh, that is something I don't recommend. Now, can you use this to day trade? Everybody wants to know. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, I don't see how you can day trade without it, but I promise you it will change your trading for the good if you do use it in your day trading. But I also promise you that I would be shocked if you have been afraid to take positions overnight, that this will open your eyes and you'll see the market, you'll see a worldview of the market that for the first time in your trading is valid and you'll understand why you can take a trade overnight and you'll also understand that going down in time frame doesn't actually decrease your risk, it increases your risk. Uh, you've got to make sure your market worldview is valid because if you don't have a market worldview that's valid, and that's your foundation, and everything from it is going to be determined on whether or not it's valid. So all the planning in the world is not going to take something that isn't valid and make it valid. Uh, there are too many traders that are still trading magic and mystery, and these traders are trading under the equivalent worldview that the world is flat. Now, I'm going to give you some more setup examples here. Uh, I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. Uh, you know, we're always looking for a mature auction, and we're always looking for a trade from the extremes, either the upper extreme, the lower extreme, or the high volume node. Uh, this also is a great view that, uh, of this, this particular chart of helping us to see what the trend is. The trend is determined by the migration of value. Value is determined where there's the most trade activity, and that's one of the benefits of the profile graph. You can see where the most trading is. The most trading is where this, this node is, where this protrusion is, and you can see the steady progression of, this, of, high, of the high volume node, the area of greatest value, higher in this particular example. Okay, now this is a bar chart of this. And I want to emphasize, and I have I've spent more time on market profile charts in this particular webinar, quite frankly, than I typically do. It's important to understand how the market and why the market does what it does. And any graph that you use, a profile graph, a bar chart, candlestick chart, any of, any of those things are just tools. And the worldview that we use it, it is consistent. It's what is the market trying to do through the lens of an auction market concept, auction market principle. And once you understand that, you will, you, you'll never look at a bar chart the same. You'll see a bar chart through that worldview, and you'll actually begin to see the, the, the bar charts in terms of profile charts. For instance, this is a 
This is a Gaussian profile shape. This is a Gaussian profile shape. It's very two-sided trading. So I have many clients that trade from bar charts, but they're trading auction market concepts. The profile chart is a wonderful reality check. Uh, it's a noise filter. So we use both charts, but we're using those charts to help us to identify the auction process and where the market may be in that auction process. But you don't have to, you know, the idea that you use one chart or the other is just silly, and you don't want to do that. So this is another example of using the risk of the smaller structure, which is this structure on a 30-minute chart here, for the potential of the much larger structure. This is the structure on the daily chart. So when I'm expecting a break of the small degree structure here, I'm having, I have the potential of the larger degree break from the daily chart. And that's the basic concept that we use. And we use it over and over and over. All right, now here's another chart of coffee. Uh, here's a high volume node. Uh, this is very similar to the example that I just showed you, but th this is a different one. Uh, you, you have the market beginning to migrate lower. You have uh, the market beginning to trend from these high volume nodes, and that happens quite frequently. So this is coffee. All right, here is that same chart. This, this is the profile view, this is the bar chart view, this is the, the larger structure. Once again, this is a, a, this is a five minute chart, this is the small degree structure. So here you have the risk of a five minute chart and the potential of a daily chart. So this is, the, this is what gives this methodology an inherent edge. It's using the smaller degree structures to define your risk when you have the potential of a larger degree structure. It's about trade location. It's not about guessing bottoms, tops, and bottoms. It's truly a different way to trade. Okay, now uh, I'm about to wrap up here. If you want more information about these concepts, go to the website, www.alexandertrading.com. There is, uh, there are three or four, I can't remember, well, at least three videos that uh, will give you more insight into some of these trade setups, into expectancy, the basic auction market principles, uh, and trade setups. So uh, it, it's right here. And if you want to get this, alexandertrading.com. You have to have a trade plan market profile, auction market concepts are valid conceptually. I don't think there is anything that is that offers more robustness or is more valid than uh, auction market concepts. You have to have appropriate strategies and tactics. You must keep accurate records and to succeed, you must be willing to do some work. There's just no getting around it. Trading is a wonderful profession, emphasis on profession, uh, all professions require hard work. All professions have a learning curve, and this one is no different. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email me at tom at alexandertrading.com. Uh, I very much appreciate your time today. I want to thank uh, Ray, Amanda, uh, Marcus, Barbara. I hope I'm not leaving anyone out. Uh, my ICE friends and my CQG friends for sponsoring this. And I'm going to turn it back over to Ray. Ray, thank you, sir. All right. My pleasure. Um, I've not seen any questions, Tom, but were you going to take some questions? Ab absolutely. I'm happy to take any questions. Fire away. Okay. Uh, Amanda, I don't know if you're on. I I can't see the questions for some reason. Are you, is, is that blocked to me? Uh, no, it's not blocked. Um, uh, towards the top of your screen, you'll get the okay. pop-up window. All right, hang on one second here. I'm sorry about that. Do options and then Q and A. Okay, hang on. I don't. Know.
know, Tom, if you can see them, maybe you can start. I can't get it to work for some reason, Amanda. I've got them. I've got them up here. Okay, go right ahead then. All right, let I me. I just can't uh, open it. Okay, got it. Okay, let's see here. <clears throat> The, the presentation is recorded. <laughs> uh, let's see. What I got mine to work now too, Tom. Okay, I'm I'm gonna. Uh, you want me to I'm ask gonna, them to you? No. Uh, I, let me just scroll through. Some of them are not questions that are relevant to the presentation. And let's see. What are the list of questions to ask a trader if he's ready to trade? Do you have a trade plan? Have you sim traded that trade plan? What are the results of that trade plan? And that's the first three questions I would ask. So are the continuation patterns a shape of market profile? Uh, I don't uh, – market profile is not a specific shape. Market profile – tends to regress into a Gaussian shape, or the auction tends to regress into, an, uh, into a uh, Gaussian shape. This is a good question, and it's a common question. Do you consider volume in your analysis of the auction market theory or just TPOs? Uh, Daryl, you will find that in the intermediate term TPOs, the longer term time frames, volume and TPOs are extremely highly correlated. Uh, this is a good question. You talked about bias. Does that come from experience or profile structure? Well, it comes from both, but I depend on, I try to be as objective and consistent as possible, Stephen. Otherwise, I don't have anything that I can teach. Uh, it has to be something that can be replicated. And, uh, you know, the working assumption that I have for markets, I think if you talk to my clients, they'll tell you I'm very consistent. I'm looking for the migration of value is determined by that that high volume node, is it moving higher or is it moving lower? And that determines my bias. Where do you determine where to split a profile? That is a topic all to itself uh, that can't be answered uh, briefly, Walter, and I apologize. I'm not being flippant. I'm, just, I'm being honest with you. Can this methodology be used in Forex? Absolutely. Let's see. I trade using market profile, but I have a problem how to define target. Do you describe this? Yes. If you go to the website, www.alexandertrading.com, here, I'll show you, and, and uh, go here, you will see examples of that. But uh, we define trade targets as well as initial risk for market structure. Uh, they are objectively and consistently determined. How do you get the profile graphs, Jim? You can get them any number of places. I use CQG. You can Google it. What kind of drawdowns can be expected with this type of trading? Uh, that's a question I can't answer. It's gonna, it, that's going to be different for everyone, and that's why I, I strongly recommend before you trade real money that you sim trade. You develop a trade plan and sim trade it until you have a positive expectancy before you begin trading. That will give you a rough idea of what you can expect as a drawdown. What is the difference between the midpoint of a trading range and a high volume point? Well, a high volume point is determined by the market itself as opposed to just a mathematical point between two extremes. They're generally the same, but not always, but that's an important point. It is the high volume node that's most important, not necessarily that that high volume node is located near the mean between two extremes. Uh, all right, this, this is a comment, because sometimes it's like trade with the market profile looks like trying to always fade the market. It, that's a myth. Uh, you know, a lot of times, there are a lot of people out there promoting market profile, using it as an excuse to fade every move that occurs. That's just, they're trading market profile. They're not trading an auction market concept. There's no magic, people. There's no magic to the market profile graph. Uh, you have to understand how a market works to make money. If you understand those five or six auction market principles uh, that I went through, it will uh, give you a completely different worldview of the market. 
Uh, Gaussian terminology, it's, it, a Gaussian is a term used to describe the, the typical uh, a normal distribution of a standard, a standard distribution of, uh, uh, I've gotten twisted around, uh, a typical st uh, uh, statistical distribution forms a Gaussian shape, sort of a bell shape, okay? What did you say? Volume and, and TPOs are closely correlated. TPOs are those letters that form the profile graph. Ken, you say, I've heard many other educators teach to trade from the edge of the value area back towards the HVN, but you seem to be doing the opposite. I wouldn't say it's the opposite, but it's a more advanced, more com we, we're, sh we're teaching a more complete view of the market. We're looking for the larger initiative trade. Uh, you know, the, once again, that, that's a, that's a good, it's a good point, good question, uh, but to get too, in it too deeply goes beyond the scope of what we're doing. Is market profile available on all trading platforms? No, but in most of them. Do you ever trade back into high volume node from fail or failing excursions to the edges? Uh, the short of it is I don't because I'm looking for the larger degree trade. If a trade, if a mature profile fails at an extreme, it's extremely likely it's going to take out the other extreme. So I don't want to take it off just because it reaches the high volume node on its way to the other extreme and through it. Do you include possible play of the day in your market analysis and trade plan? Uh, I just I do two reports. I do a report in the evening. I do a report in the morning, and I do point out what I feel are best opportunities. How often do you hold overnight? It's every time I put on a trade that I can. If I'm not stopped out, I'm holding it overnight. Is what you call high volume node also called point of control? No. Point of control is a term used for that special price that contains the highest, the greatest number of TPOs and the most amount of volume. And it's it's a perfect example of the attempt to turn this concept into magic. Uh, I use a high volume node because there's no one special price. Should I be able to trade Qs with volume profile as well with market profile? Yes. Uh, thinkorswim calls monkey bars is just the same as a market profile. It, it's a it's a it's an approximation. Wayne, yes, go to the website uh, and sign up for the free intro course and you'll get uh, more examples. Peter, you say, uh, Settlemeyer presented a new altered concept, split profiles, time, var time variable profiles for moderator series, blah, blah, blah. Your take on this. Uh, this is not new. Stellemeyer has been talking about this since the mid-1990s. He just continually rebrands it and calls it something else. I could talk about this, uh, that, and I'm not being dismissive. I am a huge admirer of Peter Stellemeyer. I think he's an incredible visionary, but I stand by what I said. What he's doing now is just a rebranding of something that he's been, in my my opinion, sort of tilting at since the mid 1990s. Uh, let's see. What other markets are you trading? I trade all markets. Uh, you know, we, the ICE was kind enough to sponsor this webinar, and quite frankly, not enough people trade contracts like the dollar index, like the cotton, like sugar, uh, like cocoa. So those are the examples we use. I trade, I'm an opportunistic trader. I'll trade gold, I'll trade the euro, I'll trade forex. I don't care. I'm an opportunistic trader. Do I sell my book? Yes, I sell my book. <laughs> Is there a difference between market profile and volume profile? Uh, effectively, not. 
Now, volume profile is, once again, it's an attempt to turn market profile into magic and rebrand it into something that it's not. What's your favorite market to trade? My favorite market to trade is one that, that uh, allows me to risk one to make 20, and that market changes on a daily basis. Now, I realize I, have, uh, I haven't have done justice to a lot of these questions, and you've asked some really good questions. Um, there's a lot of information on my website. If you, you can start by registering, you'll, you'll start getting information from us and free stuff. Uh, in addition, you'll immediately get these three videos that, uh, that you'll, you'll get when you sign up. So, uh, Ray, I'm, I'll stay here all night, but that's a fair number of questions. Okay. Uh, that was fantastic, Tom. We appreciate it. Great presentation, great questions from all of you out there in the audience. Uh, as we wrap up, I wanted to say thank you to Tom for doing this today. I want to say thank you to Marcus and CQG for being co-sponsors with us. Uh, we did record this today, so uh, we will be sending out a link uh, in the next couple of days where you can review it and watch it again. Um, and we do have many more webinars coming up in the future, so we recommend that you look at the ice.com often. Uh, look at us on Twitter, uh, ice underscore markets on Twitter. We po publish there quite a bit when we have webinars coming up. So, uh, Marcus, did you have any final comments that you wanted to make? Just um, to reiterate what I said before, if you're interested in giving CQG um, integrated client with Market Profile a try, uh, you can find it on our website and request a free trial. And uh, just thanks for the opportunity. Okay. And Tom, any final words? Uh, no. Thank you very much. Uh, Marcus, thank you, sir. Uh, I, I'll be in touch. <laughs> and. Uh, Amanda Ray, thank you. And again, all the traders out there, thanks to you guys. Do the work. Do the work. This can be done. Excellent advice. And thanks again, everyone. We'll see you for the next webinar.